What's going on guys? This is Fast Derek here in the Everett 328 Production Studios for Moto number 7 of the Moto Ohio Show. Finally getting some uh, some technical bugs worked out and uh, getting getting everything posted onto the live streams onto which it needs to be posted on, but we're getting things underway here in the studio in the Everett 328 Production Studios and we have with us as we always do the one and only Grip It Rip It Kevin Ott. Hey guys, good to be back. Glad to see uh glad to see Derek's, you know what I'm saying, unstressed a little <laughs> bit, you know what I mean? It was just a little bit of chaos there guys. Thanks for everybody staying with us and uh Looking for a good show. We got some good stuff to talk about today. Yeah, man, we've got a ton of great things to unveil to you guys, and we've also got a great local rider um, from in the Northeast Ohio area joining us. Uh, Dustin Silvis, member of the OMPR Facebook page and a member of uh, the Pit Bike Doctor, joining us. And how's it going, man? It's going good, man. Glad to be on here and uh, have a pleasure of uh, speaking with you guys and spreading the word of the group and yeah. just getting to. You know, get a feel for the things. Yeah, we are glad to announce that we are finally officially uh, hooked up with the Ohio, um, the Ohio MX Pit Bike Riders. Uh, great to be part of that organization and representing those guys to whenever we go to the racetrack and having some fun and representing uh, Sean Lowe, the Pit Bike Doctor, having some fun um, for all the races that we go to. We've got a great um, set of plans this year um, to all the races that we go to, Kevin. We're going to be, you know, flying the sh flying the ship and. Oh, dude, absolutely. Set sale. And just like that, you know, with Sean and Dustin, you, you know, guys, thanks for everything, you know. And, and like you said when you were here earlier, you know, just, just putting back the sport to where it was. Right. Just sharing it and just getting the families involved and stuff. And it just seems like that's such a great way to be. Yeah. You know, and like, like how you said, when you used to pull in beside somebody and you were you're their best friend again, let's get, let's make the moto great again. And I think the OMPR and stuff like that is is really catching that drift. Because I think you guys are doing a great job on the pit bike. That's the new scene. Because I yeah. remember. Um, phew, when I first got back into motor, or when I first got into motocross, like in the early 2000s, you know, pit bikes were was, was the hot ticket item. Everybody was getting an XR50 or a CRF50 right. back in the For day sure. and, and hopping those things up. And next thing you know, you've seen the extreme machines coming around. Those were those were pretty legit pit like bikes. The wildfires and some yeah. things like that. Some crazy off-brand like different shifting right. like, to go up in the gearbox you would push down yeah <laughs> some crazy different pit bike strategies but they've really come full circle with it now also i do want to make a huge uh, huge announcement that we are we have moved studios we were I in know, my right? youngest we were a new look we were in my youngest stepdaughter's uh, bedroom that was the everett 328 production studios but we have since given her uh her bedroom back and we have moved into the, the kids playroom so um the kids playroom is now the official moto ohio uh show studio the everett 328 production studios and um all right, I will uh, turn up the just voice the a little hair, bit for you guys. The hair. That's what that's what's that's All right. great about the comments, guys. Yes, they might be a little bit delayed, but I will see them. Let me try, try to, to make some adjustments, and answer some questions and stuff for everyone, so you guys can uh, so you guys can hear us a little bit better. So hey, hopefully, hello guys. If it, we'll make We're some adjustments great. on the fly, so just let us know what we can change, and we'll make it better for you guys that are. Uh, Facebook live streaming with us. So we're glad to be Facebook live streaming to the Moto Ohio show page, Everett 320 Productions, as well as OMPR. So we're going to be streaming for those guys uh, for the upcoming future. Yeah, yeah. And uh, looking forward to riding some pit bikes around. Um, get, but getting back to where we were talking about earlier, yeah. um, early early in the 2000s, we always seen like the XR 50s and the CR 50s, you know, getting hopped up. And we seen the XR, or excuse me, the Extreme 50s. But then the pit bike scene kind of kind of took a nosedive for a little while. But then it kind of did. It kind of did, but I just feel like it, it really vamped back up whenever the track started adding such different classes, and you throw that money out there to some of these guys, they're going to go after. You it. do have to attribute a lot of it to the economy, though, because the economy right. tanked absolutely right. tanked in two thousand eight, and then nobody was buying anything, let alone right. a recreation fun bike. They were Correct. they were going out there and investing their hard earned dollars on their race bikes, but when when the economy tanked, they kind of you know put the pit bikes on the back burner. But now that the economy's you know booming again. Everything's booming, and pit bikes are great again. Yeah. Also, at that point in time, like a lot of the uh, aftermarket production companies, they all they all fell with the you know the economy as well. Yeah. And now they're all starting to reproduce, and you know you're starting to see some new companies pop up. Because we've seen BBR was doing some crazy things early in the early in the two thousands with the perimeter aluminum frames, and we. Right seen those kind of disappear for a little while people were buying those things on the used market left and right and are they starting to produce a new or produce a new um, frame I actually or? I actually spoke with Dwayne today at BBR and uh, you know he's swamped right now <laughs> trying to get things back and you know meet the needs of everybody with the way things are growing right now and that's awesome um, yeah it's, so it's better to be busy than not busy right so uh, it's, uh, a lot great. of big things coming in the I, near future, I, I see. did see that BBR was starting to pr reproduce um, 
crane freedles for for TTR 125s and stuff like yeah. that. So so they are starting to um, to reinvest back in in the pit bike community. Right. So that's awesome to see. Most definitely. Um, what else has been going on in the recent you know pit bike world? As we've seen you know money getting reinvested <laughs> in the pit bikes, uh, we're seeing more and more brands starting to show their faces around. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, there for a while, even in the past years, I mean, there for a while, pit bikes were paying out more than the A class. <laughs> yeah, they were. I that's mean, insane. That's insane. Uh, I'm, and that's what I say. You're going to get that crowd to come when that's like that. And I don't even know. I mean, this might be a controversial topic to bring up, but uh, I mean, even at the past past weekend at Summit, I mean, the amount of pit bikes that were there was almost equal to the amount of all Regular the other classes up. combined. Yeah. I mean... You could you almost know, have a pit bike only event at Summit and still draw the crowd that you did for oh, yeah. spectators and you know riders and make money. I think so. Right. I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I used to be a big bike rider, and I I had a bad accident at Summit, and I don't I don't think that track is designed for a big bike. I mean, you guys might agree, but I, I don't have. I mean, I no, have, I've, <laughs> it's a little tight, right? You know I mean, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely it's definitely tight, right. but it's definitely got to be a good good time on on one of the smaller machines. Oh yeah, you know, to whip around in there and get some laughs. Well, a Cali four fifty has five gears. And you are lucky to leave first, so that's yeah. you could say that an indoor track doesn't really an indoor track of that size. Right. I was gonna say some of your bigger venues, some of your rooms, we found right. that the big bikes really work out good, and you can have a great time. But you know, with Summit being a little bit smaller, but I still have a good time either way. Oh yeah, you just like bikes. It's not like getting gate drops in the winter time is not fun. No. Yeah, and I have to. <laughs> it's do it always fun. So that's where the spots at. Yeah, you know. Right. So. And they've been racing pit bikes at Summit for. Years. 20 years yeah, yeah when pretty was, much since it when started when you wore a wig and it was funny yeah you, you know what I mean like that's funny. how the pit bike nation was and now to see it grow and to be able to put the money in and to you guys to really be doing the jumps and putting in the time that you do right. it's amazing man it's just great to see it, it went from up. went from kids trail bikes to legit adult race bikes right the only thing that separates them from a, a race bike quote is uh, air cooling and the motor goes this way yeah. Instead of this or, way, horizontal way. Yeah. Right, that's about the only big difference. But the pit bikes are insane this year. They're insane, insane. They're coming. They're coming yeah. full circle. Um, yep. Glad to be a part of OMPR. Glad to be a part of the pit bike doctor. Glad to have you in in the uh, in the studio, Dustin. And um, we're getting we're gonna not put you on hold, but we're gonna put a pin in that and get back to you a little bit later in the show. Um, but fine. this this past weekend, I personally was down at Route 62 MX for the final round of the. Route 62 Indoor Series. And oh, there you go. It was great. Sweet. And I, you guys had some decent weather? Yeah, it, it like wasn't, wasn't too bad. It wasn't, wasn't terrible for, you know, mean, uh, you know, midwinter in Ohio. You and I have gone down to 62 before, even on and the cold days. it was freezing days. that day. Freezing that yeah. day. And still the pits. Terrible were, cold, dude. I was frozen. <laughs> the pits were still balmy in 70. It was, it was, That's right. it was, it was insane. We were overdressed for the pits. We and was. we had to strip down clothes when we got there. So it was, it was a lot of fun going down to 62 for that pit bike race that we were at a couple of weeks ago. But this past weekend, we were at the, or I was at the Winter Series, you know, talking on the microphone, getting the people hyped, getting people down to the staging area and doing podium interviews um, after the top finishers from that second moto came off the track so it was a lot of fun talking to some of these young riders that don't get the opportunity to get up there on the stage and get the limelight and get That's the it. pictures taken from them mom and dad and grandma and grandpa or whoever else came so it was a lot of fun going down there and we've seen a lot of fast riders so some of the riders that raced in the 50cc junior class all season like the one rider that Moving. was sitting yeah. up on top of the points we did not see him on top of the podium at the end of the weekend. We had one rider that hasn't raced that many of these Route 62 indoor races. Uh, Brock Rico take the moto win in that 50cc uh, junior class this past weekend. So he was looking super fast. He's raced a few of them before with uh, mixed results. But this past weekend, he came out on top. So that put it together. Cool. What I noticed when I was going through these, these sets of results is some of the up-and-coming riders that are moving up. You know, I see yeah. them getting the fourths, the thirds, the seconds, and then backing it up and beating some of those the very same guys that are beating them and going one, 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 yep. you know, and really starting to click off their laps. And that's excellent. So we have one, C one rider right, right here, um, the number 11 of Braxton Saunders in that 50cc beginner class. Early in the season, in the winter season, he was just a rider. Right, he right. Was, now he's a contender. Now he's a contender. That's amazing to see the progression, and that's just 
That's just awesome. You and know? look for him coming next year. I believe he's a little bit older in that 50cc beginner class, so he's probably going to transition onto a, onto a horizontal engine, like a, like a pit bike base chassis, Absolutely. or maybe yeah. even a 65cc bike. But he's got potential, and he's going to be looking pretty good in the future. Right. Um, we have seen the number 42 at Cameron Badger race quite a few races. I believe he was up here at uh, Summit a few weeks ago with some pretty great results. We've seen uh, Cameron and Uriah Messerschmidt here at Summit a few weeks ago. Right. And those two riders have been, you know, pretty much taking it down there at 62 all season long. And Badger was uh, able to come across the finish line this past weekend in fourth in that senior class. Something must have happened early in that race. That's um, awesome. To finish in fourth behind the number 79, Uriah Messersmith, who was Remember, taking like you said, the, the progression. Win. Right. You know, that's, I mean, that's that's saying a great a great deal of what these, these tracks are, are, availing, are, are giving available to you in the wintertime at least. Yeah. You know, I mean, because if not, you would have a place to go. Right. You know, I mean, 62 is a hell of a good place to go on a pit bike. Oh, for sure. I'll tell you that. I, I had a ball there, man. That thing was a good time, so. You going down there this weekend? Um, pit bike badge? I'm not sure if we're going to make it this weekend. Okay. Uh, I'm in there. Sean and I are actually getting ready to go down to uh, the FMF Arena Cross the next weekend. All right, you all right. That. So, that's 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 negotiable. That's awesome. That's, yeah, that's that's a fair trade. Well, right. Yeah, yeah. We'll put a pin in. We'll put a pin in that pit bike uh, topic because we'll we'll catch back up on that a little yeah, bit absolutely. later. Um, in the 50 cc shaft drive class, it was Kai Fuller that was able to pretty much sweep the whole series um, with five out of the seven wins in that 50 cc shaft drive class, 30 points ahead of the next competitor. So right. Kai Fuller looking super fast, uh, running through some of these other classes. One rider that you are familiar with, you're not, well, I can't say you personally are familiar with, you're familiar with his dad, this guy right here, Cruz Willard. Oh, that's oh, that's Michael's son, isn't yep, it? Yep, that's Mike, Will, that's Mike Willard's son. We see okay. him right down there just kind of hanging that out. That looks about correct, too. Yep, that's pretty well. <laughs> <on dad. laughs> pretty well represents his, um, his results all season long. He has pretty much swept that 65cc He's junior class the number, number 49, 49. Cruz hey. Willard. Um, he ended up coming across the finish line in third in that 65 junior class this past weekend. Um, the top step went to the number uh, 167 Yamaha of Eli Deal. He was looking super fast this past weekend. He took the race win with Levi Rice in second. Um, just want to wrap up with a couple more of these results. Cruz Willard was looking super fast in the 65 open class with the number one position over Jeffrey Morrison Jr., who took the uh, took the title in that 65 Open Winter Series. Right. Yeah. And finishing in second was the number 505 of Gavin Covert. We've seen Covert race um, a lot of local races here in Northeast Ohio in second place. It's not nice. bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, getting it on the box and putting it together, you now, know, and that's, that's solid. The 85cc classes, it seemed like the signups were a little bit lackluster compared to what it would be for an outdoor race. It's like the 85cc and super mini bike is getting to be about the size for that place. It's getting to, yeah, it's about all yeah. the bigger you can get. No, I'm thinking the 65, that's why your 65 class, I'd say, is, is the size it is. It seems like a real yeah. good track for that base. Now, I have seen the Mitten boys go down there and spend some laps inside of Jimmy's indoor facility, yeah. but that's just to pretty much get some seat time in the wintertime. It's not, not something to go crazy on on a 450 or a 250F. Um, but looking back this past weekend in the 85 senior class, it was uh, Sam Laddig finished in second place behind Stephen Belcher. Stephen Belcher raced a few of these um, Route 62 races, and he was able to take the 85 senior uh, main event win. He was also able to take the 85 CC Open win as well. The number uh, 97 Kawasaki, Stephen Belcher. How you doing there, Coco? Got one of the dogs joining us here in the Ever 328 Production Studios. Um, in the 85 junior class, the number 716 of uh, Landon Williams taking the top step of the podium in that 85 junior class. Trail bike race win went to the number 710 of Nate Phillips this past weekend. He took second place in the points behind the number 13 of Kalen Simpson. A um, couple other classes, Cameron Badger and Uriah Messersmith back up on top of the box in the 50cc open main event points. Uh, only one point separating those two riders. So if, if Messersmith was able to get just a slightly better finish Oh yeah, he would have taken that 50 cc open um, championship from Route 62 indoor series. That's it. You see the one point did not. The yeah, one that's, point difference. That's where it's at too. That's how it gets it. That is awesome. Oh, um, we've also got some riders. Um, they race Striders down there at Route 62, so that's a lot of fun watching those people um, spinning some laps on the on the no pedaled bicycles. <laughs> Um, I always love watching it. Rainy did it. Rainy did it at the time he was down there, dude. And it was just one of the cutest things ever. In the, they have an ATV classes that they race down there as well. Um, Drew Wolford, he was super fast. He s pretty much swept the Route 62 indoor ATV 90 class, um, taking the uh, main event win this past uh, Sunday. Um, Bryson Dickerson in the ATV 70 class finished in second place behind Branson Imhoff. 
who took the race win, and the 0-1-2 of Stetson Spalding rounded out your top three in the 70 class. And in the ATV 50 class, always smiling, the number 247, Raylan Dickerson. She is a ton of fun to watch. She is just Sweet. always, always smiling. So it's That's a great what motocross is all about, man. That's yep. it. Her and her brother both um, looking to see where she, where he is. He is the number 42 of, let me find him. I know he's in here somewhere. 40, no, it's oh. not him. I'm sorry. Um, misspoke. He's in the 50cc junior class. I got to find him. I got to find him and give him a shout out because he's a super good right there. Bryce McKee. Right there. Good job. Bryce McKee, he took the second spot in that 50cc junior points. He finished in second place in that 50cc junior class as well. Um, <clears throat> Riley McKee, that's who, is, that's who I was thinking of, is Riley McKee. She is always smiling. Uh, she finished in third place in that ATV 50 class. So Raylan Dickerson yeah. was super... Not far out of second place either. No, not at all. Um, it's, it, I like seeing those McKees at the racetrack. They're always, yeah. always having some fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to going down there for Jimmy next year for the Renner Series. I'll be there all winter next year and... My stepdaughter will be doing a lot of racing next year down there. So it'll be a good time for her to get some more, some more track yeah. time. She did race this past weekend, and she didn't quite have the results and the experience which she was hoping for. It was her first ever gate drop, my stepdaughter's. Um, but she's still wanting to keep on doing it. She had a couple of soil samples. She did have a couple of things going wrong. but That's what happens with two wheels. Dad made a couple of mistakes this past weekend, so it wasn't all on her. I was uh, I was adjusting to the learning curve as well. So Right, and it's it's different between a moto parent and just a moto rider. You know, because You're telling gets, me, man. It gets a lot more. It gets, I get more nervous and more worked up for my nephews than I do my own stuff. I'm getting crazy. Because I know what I'm about to go out and do. You know, I got my game plan set. I'm like, well, do they have a game plan? Are you thinking about... Jeez. You know, ch chicken wings or something. You know, <laughs> I mean, they we're supposed to be racing, but we may have nuggets on the mind. You just I, never can tell. I have a two-year-old son now, and it's always been a dream to put him in the sport. And it's Absolutely. Just like, now that he's actually here and it's all real, it's like, oh. A broken man. arm. Right. You know? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I look back on my injuries yeah. and stuff, and it's like, wow. That's it, man. Um, <laughs> I'm super excited for this year, though, because I'm really excited to see her get some more gate drops and get some more seat time. But that's what it's all about is, even though when he crashed. It's experience, man. You come off the track, you are crying, you're mad, you're sad, but you still want to keep doing it because the fun factor is outweighs all the negative. See, by Monday, Tuesday, you get that mad factor then. You're like, I can do better than this. Oh, yeah. You know, and then by Wednesday, Thursday, you're back training. Friday, we're just taking a day off Saturday, Sunday, let's go. Wednesday. I know that she's going to be asking me, when when can we go to that place to ride our motorcycles again? So um, we're, we're getting there, Emma. We're going to get there. That's it. Um, I was super stoked to go down there this past weekend, Route 62, the final round of the indoor series. I, need, I made a joke with uh, Jared Meister a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to try to say, I can't thank you guys enough. I'm going to try to say that no, not, no times. So um, that's the one time, Meister, you're going to catch me saying that. So um, if you're listening, hopefully you won't hear it again. Hey! <laughs> um, <laughs> what else we got to talk about this weekend? We just wrapped up with the Rousey Stu Indoor Series. Um, we got Dustin in the studio. But before we get to Dustin, do you want to talk about what we didn't talk about the past couple of weeks or are we going to put a pin in that for another time? We might do a pin in that for soon. We're a little bit late today. You know, yeah. we're going to get the flags taken care of, guys. I promise we're, we're going to talk flags about places. flags. Well, it's we're been three flags. weeks straight that we've had uh, flags we're, on the we're dock. We're getting better. About. Our buttons are getting better. We're adding things. Yeah. We're sharing to more pages. So we, we were, just needed a little bit of glitch. We were about a half an hour control. late. About a half an hour late getting the live stream going. We were initially started on there, but it wasn't posted over to the OMPR webpage. So I had to cancel the live stream and re- restart things so now we should be available on facebook on route 62 or excuse me on a dude just as we said it, it's lagging Ohio. a little bit jordan beadling hits flags <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'll get on that flags uh mr yeah. beadling um so we should be posting on to ompr that's why you guys may have seen the live stream and it disappeared and then came back is because we weren't really posting everywhere that we were trying to post to so we had to take a take a couple minutes and figure out a couple things um anything going on on the social media kevin uh one thing that i would just like is a quick shout out to jack dill you yep. know in his in his uh race your ohio Buc buckeye series mx action magazine you know guys make sure you check that out you know it's online follow his facebook page or whatever and uh he's really keeping the sport going down in southern western ohio you yep. know and working with scott and stuff stuff like that and just a big shout out to those guys and everything they do and Trying to get everything to move around because we're going to be doing some stuff at Chili Town. Yeah, we, we got know, a bunch it, of reasons. It should, be, it should be a really good time, but that's about everything. And then just uh, if you guys have any questions or something, I see someone here who's asked for questions, just go ahead and, and shoot them through. If you guys have any questions, I'll try to keep up. Yeah. You know, and as we see them, we'll go ahead and... Uh, I want to try to... Uh, you're we'll looking on the Moto Island show. If, if anybody has right. any questions, I'm... 
Kevin's just moderating um, the uh, Moto Ohio show page. I'm so if anybody posts yeah. over to the Everett 320 Productions, I'm going to try to take care of that as well for you guys. Um, right. So, and yeah, big shout out, you know, I mean, to to all those guys down there who are making it. You know, Jack Dale, Scott Plessinger. We really appreciate, you know, just the just everyone just pulling together. Chili Town not closing. That was a bonus, you know what I mean? Because it was going to go down and down in flames. So <coughs> thank goodness it's still up and running. We have that, you know, we're going to have the area qualifier here coming up. And uh, looking forward to seeing what, you know, seeing 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 some of the competition and seeing where the races are at down that way. So it awesome. should be a good time. I was uh, just catching up on the Facebook post. I can actually view all the comments. So you can, you can, no, we're good. you're good, yeah. you're good, Kevin. You can just I'll enjoy try. the show. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll try to keep track of paying attention to the comments, clicking the buttons and keeping things rolling here. But um. Don't worry about it, buddy. We got all the dogs joining us now in the studio. Got Reba Girl here. Um, but we've got we got Dustin here in the studio, and you didn't just start riding pit bikes. You got started riding a long time ago. Let's rewind back to where it all got started. Where did you uh, Where did you get the itch to twist the grips? Um, my dad actually bought me my first motorcycle when I was six six months old. Um, a little bit, a little bit premature there. Yeah, and. <laughs> I still am a little premature. I mean, I'm not. I'm I mean, not it was real just tall, a KTM you know. KTM 65. <laughs> I mean, me. what's the matter? <laughs> there, there was many devastating Christmases for my dad. You know, not being able to touch, having to build training wheels. You know, <laughs> what was your I, first bike? I think bike? I still need them, but you know. <laughs> what but, was uh, your first bike back in the day? It was a, uh, a S- SL 70. Okay. Honda SL 70. Oh, yeah. Sweet. And uh, yeah, so bike. yeah, it was a cool little bike. Yeah. He, he got it in a box, and him, and him and his buddy put it together, and they painted it all up, gave it to me for Christmas. I was six months old. and uh, didn't get to appreciate it for another couple of years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we actually had it until I was like 12 years old, and I think we got rid of it. And, well, that's something to keep on forever. You might like yeah, track one of those down. I think when I turned 17, I think my, my parents had bought me 37 motorcycles. Just a my, couple? Yeah, just a couple throughout Damn, my racing career. I'm, yeah, I'm trying nice. to keep up to that number. I got a couple of them in the wow, garage. Wow, that's so. a heck of a number. That's, I didn't hear I didn't, Foresee that coming out, man. That's a, that's, yeah. a couple, that's a couple bikes, yeah. man. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Um, but you transitioned off of those small bikes. When did you start racing then? Um, I started racing when I was about five or six. Okay, um, just locally here in Northeast Ohio. Yeah, just locally. Where are you from originally? Right here in Louisville. Louisville, yeah. All right. Yeah. So Malvern was my home tag, okay. hometown track growing up, and uh, so you're just so. a year younger than I. We were talking about that off the microphones before right. we got started here. You remember racing with me back on the 85s and super minis but that's that's before i hit my head a couple of times so i i, I probably knocked those memories out of my head a little bit <laughs> but right. um it's great that you stayed in the sport that long because a lot of people they can they get in the sport of motocross their dad gets them in then they go off to college and they just kind of let things go but it's great that you've right. made full circle and, and stayed with it and i mean i i, st- I was dormant for a little bit um you know, everybody has just, down. I think everybody had that. I think, so. I think so. I think yeah. we all had that kind of era when we were in our early twenties. You know, late teens. You know, take a couple steps back and come back. Yeah, you kind of you kind of venture off and do different things in life, and then you know, but it's always in your blood, so you come back to it. You know. Oh yeah. Um, and I, I kind of have been struggling with that whole concept for a while. Uh, you know, when really? I was like when I was like twenty one, I gave up on you know. Being the pro motocross rider that everybody has a dream of, you know what I mean, and uh, everybody everybody that's racing has that dream, but you just kind of gotta right, you gotta, you gotta take the you gotta get a reality check every once in a while, and, exactly. And, and it took you, it you got that, I got that when I was, yep, probably about the same age, right. late late teens, early yeah, twenties, like 25. Right. You still have it. What are you talking about? I don't have much. You <laughs> still got it. You're I still the pro it. guy chasing it. I'm still, well, I'm still just, I want to do some bet classes. That's where I'm at. But yeah. Uh, I, obviously, you know Jared Meister because he said Dustin can still fit his first bike. Laugh out loud. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's yeah. fabulous. I just, that's why I'm sitting here laughing about him like that's, Jared. That's why I'm doing the whole Meister, bike thing. Man. I mean, they, they fit me perfect now. You that's know? it. That's what I thought about too. I was like, well, I'm light enough, man. It's so you, me around good. You raced, you know, through 65s, 85s, even onto big bikes. And right. up, you even said that you even transitioned into the B class, which is no joke. I mean, right. B class riders aren't slow. So you've got right. some pretty good skills under your belt. Yeah. Um, Any big notable races back in the day before you kind of hung up the big bikes or the, the quote, race bike stuff? Uh, I did a few qualifiers. Like I said, uh, I ran down the local points series for a okay. while. Um, Just kind of doing a local Back thing. then it was a little challenging. Like I said off the air earlier, uh, back when I was running two-stroke bike, I've never been a four-stroke guy. Till, I've been a two-stroke guy. Now, you know, I've got, got the two-strokes too, uh, I'm the same way. But, you know, 
Vincent Carnot was a man to run down back in the day, and uh, you know it was tough. <laughs> He's still as, as far as my skill there. levels and his, they were way off. But yeah. I mean, you know, there was there was always that. I remember one instance where I was riding with Vince Carnell at Crow Canyon, and he and him and I finished one two in the two stroke class. But it wasn't anything because I was on a two fifteen, he was on a one twenty five, and he was just walking away right, from right. me. So he's no he's no joke. And, and speaking of Carnell, his his son's racing. So. Vincent? Vincent? Logan is. Oh, that's his nephew. Nephew? Okay, nephew. my mistake. Are you okay? Yeah, Logan's going great. He's this year was best year. Yeah, he's, he's doing his best year. He'll even drop out 88 to a smaller digit number next totally year. He keeps finishing like he does. <clears throat> but you were racing with, you know, all the big guys who kind of sucked right. all the potential out of going somewhere with it because those guys were... I mean, I, I, I did grow up with a lot of a good mentors. Uh, you know, I grew up riding with Chris Carr. Yeah, he's a great um, guy. He went, he went far with it for a while. Um, you yeah, know. Chris is a good rider, man. He still is. Still, right. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. I, I haven't seen him around lately, though. I did hear that he was at Summit, but I didn't see him. So I right. I was talking to Chris not too awful long ago. It's always fun to listen to his political rants. So Chris is a pretty, uh, pretty opinionated wide. individual. I don't know if he's listening, but I hope he is. If not, we're going to have to get him listening. Um, and I grew up racing with uh, Jeff Pape and Dave Bernard. And, I mean, uh, did you race some of the Born Horse back in the day? Yeah, yeah, they were around. Uh, they raced mainly back in the, the District 12 stuff, the Newfield League yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, um, Me and Born Horse had a couple of run-ins and some practice. Oh, moves, really? So, oh, yeah. <laughs> but. Jacob, yeah. Okay, I, I, that name sounds familiar. Yeah, I rode with Jake and Joe. Those are the guys that actually got me into racing. That's, well, thank goodness for them. Their dad, it was my dad's, or their dad was the mail carrier for my where my dad lived for the longest time, and that's kind of how it all started. Now you just race to see how fast you get the show turned on. You know, you're doing a great job at it. You know, uh, no, Trying to yeah. get him on the bike all the time. He just won't get on there. We've got, maybe you help me. We, yeah, maybe. We maybe. give him a bike. He's uh, gonna have to ride yeah. something. He's like, oh, I want yeah. all these bikes in the garage. I don't know what for. I gotta get on them. You <laughs> gotta get him on there, guys. Help me out here. Facebook. This weekend, I will be. Uh, I'll be. I'll be riding some pit bikes. That's sweet. Yeah. At least, yeah. at least riding some pit bikes. Have to. Right. Um, but back to you. Back to you, uh, Dustin. You transitioned up into the big bikes and. You had a nasty incident there at Summit. When was that? Uh, that was when I was 18, so it would have been 2008 somewhere. Running yeah. first and two-stroke bike. Uh, lap rider came from across the whoop section at the time, which was in the center of the track. And he got whiskey throttle and just T-boned me wide open. I flew across the track, hit one Ooh. of them plastic barriers and staging wow. there, shattered my collarbone. Yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a pretty sight. Do you but, still uh, have any big bikes at home? Yeah, I just recently uh, redid a 01 CR 125. There you uh -oh. go. And uh, yeah, I still got it. I like to fire it up every now and again. Hear that ping, you know? Just smell the two strokes. Yeah, just smell the premix. We got the two strokes premix. Yeah. Uh, we do and ground too. in these banners. But so, uh, I've rode it a few times. Delicious. We go down to the um, Mid Ohio Vintage Nationals every year. What year is it? What year? Yeah. It's, um, it's every year oh. in July. Usually. No, what year is your Honda? Oh, 01. 01. Did you yeah. mention that? I didn't. I wasn't. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. So we go down to Mid Ohio yeah, every year. Pretty big smell. I built that bike <laughs> to ride down there, so. Um, That'll be a pretty it's good It's always a good time, isn't it? I've got yeah. a good friend that goes and does that, Carl Schwab. Yeah, he's, he's got an older bike. It's like first gen, second gen, yep. third gen, correct? Yep. And you can do the appropriate classes for your older, older uh, your age of bike. It's pretty sweet. I, I've, I've looked it up. I want to get to Mid-Ohio. Get... That looks like a lot yeah, of fun. I'm trying to get, because like, so many old, cool races were held there, that I want to go be a part of that heritage. Oh, it's, it's you know awesome. I mean, I just want to be a part I of mean, that. Yeah, I did race it once, at least. I mean, like, like we talked about earlier, you know, uh, bringing the family-oriented thing back into the That's racing. It. I yeah. mean, it, it is through and through down there at Mid-Ohio. Well, I mean, see, and not only that, it's, it's, it's more the motorcycle race, more kind of lay of the land, I believe. Right. You know, not a lot of big, crazy obstacles, so it takes you almost even farther back to where it even began because, it, I mean, motocross just used to go through a field. You got some right. air, you caught some air. You know what I mean? There was no, like, was jumps like, made that... And I mean, I mean you, you, still, you still have some big names that come down there and oh, absolutely. race. absolutely. Yeah. Mean, uh, you know. I'm, um, I'm pretty sure that we had... Um, Mitchie Zaromba come and race, or come in the Mid Ohio Show Studio or the Evergreen Land Production Studio not too awful long ago, and he's raced at Mid Ohio, and he has a couple of number one plates. They're not right. bikes of his, but they're they're old school bikes. Um, true. Old. Uh, who's the old pit bike moderator? Who's the old pit bike or not pit bike? Um, pit racer. Oh. Uh, uh, Two sixty one. John Kreps. 
Oh yeah, I'm Krebs. pretty sure they were yeah. Krebs's bikes. I, I, I thought you were talking about Clevenger. I was like, he was a big pit racer guy too. John 16. Yeah, John 16. Yeah, he was the, the guy. That was, yeah, that was that's He never I raced. Saw. Why never? Did, why John He's never an A-rider too, man. He does such good balance practices in the morning and stuff. He's he could throw a bike so flat. He's, he's yeah, he's a smooth rider. He was he was legit. Um, that's awesome though that you were still able to come back on the racetrack though, Dustin, after experiencing a pretty nasty injury and yeah. make the best of it and still have just as much fun now, if not more fun, because you're a part of something huge now. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, you know, even though I wasn't riding the big bikes as much as I used to, I was still always into the, the pit bikes. I mean, that's kind of what kept me glued to the sport. Yeah. Um, but now, it, you know, it's hot and heavy, bigger than ever. That's uh, that's kind of what I've been, I've been wanting to get more and more into pit bike racing because, you know, as the announcer for the races, my, my role as the announcer is to be there announcing the event. So I don't feel right taking time out of me announcing to go down there and twist the gas with the rest of you guys because then I'm not putting on the show for you guys. Right. If, I'm there, if I'm there announcing a race, I'm there to announce it from the morning to the end. Right. Where pit bike racing comes into play great for me is they don't usually have the pit bike races as part of their you know main event show. It's usually right. the Saturday night before or right. the day leading up to or after after it's all said and done or it's a standalone event all by itself. Right. So that's where the pit bike has a huge appeal to me. It gives me the opportunity to not feel bad about having fun with you guys again. So that's right. why I'm I'm all about making pit bikes great again. <laughs> it's been, no, no joke. I'm all I about bet. it. Yes, yeah. the motor. It gives you some time. It gives you some seat time, a little bit of time on the track to feel it out and check it out and have a good time. I do have that first place uh, Moto Limbo Chili Town Classic uh, <laughs> plaque over there on the wall. I got that from a pit bike. So Sweet. <laughs> I, I can go low under a bar, but it's got to be on a pit bike. <laughs> right, so right. It. I'm yeah. all about it. I'm all about having fun, you know, on the on the horizontal four stroke. So that's yeah. that's kick ass, yeah. to say the least. Um, what else are we going to talk about real quick before we get uh, carried on? You know, how long have you been hooked up with OMPR? Because you say that you were the, the VP of the page. How long have you been? Yeah. Um, Cause it's, the, it's the largest pit bike group in Ohio, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Go, uh, go, it was actually one of the originals as well. Um, I was a moderator for the page for quite some time. Uh, Sean made me a uh, admin. Uh, it was probably last year sometime. Okay. And, uh, we just started this whole partnership thing a few months back, and uh, it's been we've been really hammering at it. Uh, you guys you know, are everywhere together, it seems. Right. Like. Well, I mean, we're you know we're trying to trying to grow the scene fast, and you know get it back to where it was. Sean was real big into the pit bike scene three, you know, probably about three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, personal reasons kind of made him lay off the you know the, the page and whatnot, and everybody you know kind of thought he did away with it. We were still working on it, but uh, everything takes now, now back. everything's back. You know, the pieces of the puzzle are together now, and, and we're 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 firing I it off. Was talking with Sean that he is trying to get, and he is getting hooked up with, and you guys are getting hooked up with a couple of uh, indoor races this coming winter. Yeah, so we got some be... things in the mix. Uh, we're looking to possibly, you know, put some series together. Uh, that's in the the future. Um, you know, that's if I've, everything. I've got a little know, information in my in my. I've got a little information right. that was leaked to me that we're not going to mention anything until it's all official. Because right. Once I mean, it you does know, become official, it's going to be pretty huge. You know, that's all. That's just, whether it works out or not. I mean, that's what our future plans are. Is to, you know, develop, you know, a series like there's there's the master of the mini series out out on the east coast. Uh, the, we can do something like that. Oh, most definitely. Um, like we can, we can do something like that. I, I haven't had a chance to make it out there yet. Um, I know a lot of them guys out there. Um, they, they do. They put on a good show. Um, and we're uh, we're working with a few people and trying to figure you know some things out and whatnot. Um, okay. We plan to travel and travel a lot this year and visit some other tracks right. and series and see you know speaking of traveling i am also traveling a lot this year and i'm hoping to see you guys at every place that i travel to if right. not you know spread the word where i'm not I mean, right. like i said earlier uh march 13th to 14th we're going down to the 28th annual fmf indoor motocross winter series at the uh apex arena in withville virginia That'd be sweet. Um, that'd, that'd be sweet. sweet. That's that's yeah. the last round of their series. I don't um, have anything going on that weekend. Right. Come down with us. 
<laughs> my Honda Fit gets 30 miles to the gallon, and it'll fit a pit bike in the back. <laughs> I'm hoping to be an Indy. I know. Oh, there you go. It sounds like you don't have an excuse now, right? No, I'm going to Indy. <laughs> He's going to Indianapolis well, that weekend. Uh, Derek doesn't have an excuse. You know, no, he's going to get him on a bike. I oh, don't have an excuse. There it is. There there it is. is. Mazinga, he just he, backed himself. He into yeah, I just backed yeah. myself into a corner on that one. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that'll be, a pretty, that'll be a pretty awesome event. That's coming up in um, about a week and a half. Yeah. So that's, once again, where, where is that again? It's at the Apex Center in Whiffville, Virginia. I'll look into that. It's about five hours from here, so that's nothing for me because I've right. been dri- I've been just driving. Salem. Yeah, we just we went to Salem, cross. Virginia, which was at a seven-hour drive for the Tri-State <laughs> Arena Cross Series, which I do want to make a huge shout out. The Tri-State Arena Cross um, folks have finally um, dropped the date for their banquet, I'll and hope. the Tri-State Arena Cross banquet is going to be on. Mar- or excuse me, April 11th. It's going to be Saturday, April 11th. The Tri-State Arena Cross Indoor um, Indoor Arena Cross Series has their banquet nice. at I-64 MX, um, just off of I-64, Interstate 64. Uh, make sure you guys look that up on Facebook. The Tri-State Arena Cross Winter Series Banquet Sweet. on April Go get 11th. your awards. You know that you work so hard for all year. And I do have that date free. I do have that date wrote on my calendar. I do have a bike in the garage, and I will be down there riding. Sweet. It, Putting, yeah, we're going. We're going okay. down there to ride. So, I like it. Well, um, what's this date again? You might want to write it down. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sketch it in stone. <laughs> yeah, we're going to etch it in stone to get me on a motorcycle again. Right. Um, April 11th um, for the Tri-State Arena Cross uh, Banquet. So I'm so stoked for that. Um, but back to what we were talking about. That's coming up. Your Arena Cross, you're going down to uh, in just a couple of weeks. So that's going to be a pretty, yeah. pretty killer event. Yeah. Um, any other races you got scheduled up in the near future, Dustin? Oh... Uh, um, June 13th, um, I don't know, it's been floating around on Facebook, uh, Monster Energy is having the, uh, Master of the Pit at Bike Town Harley-Davidson up in, uh, Austin Town. Um, okay. That'd be they're gonna cool. have a Stasis class, a PW class, um, new production stock class along with an L class, an open class, and a master class for the 40-year-olds and above. Um... Main event qualifiers from each race will be chosen by Ryan Villapoto. Carson Brown will be there along with Willie Browning. And you get to race with against them on what a yes, 110? Uh, yes, on all TTR 110s. Um, oh, that's so, sweet. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, What's the date on that again? What was that? Uh, May? June 13th. June 13th. June 13th. So, Make sure you guys mark that down on your calendars at home. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, just a couple big pit bike events coming up. Um, that's sweet, man. Yeah. It'll be a good time to go against, you know, Ryan Villapoto test a couple skills. Right, never know. Dude, the least. You never know. He's yeah, just, it's a pit bike, dude. It's all. all right. It's not. It's not. It's not all rider. Then I think it's some luck and some technique and some form and right. all of it into one. You know, and getting and getting a good start or something like I that. I mean, there, there's really there really hasn't been a big uh, promotional pit bike race since Vegas stopped. You're right. I mean, Vegas was you know the the golden ticket. You know what I mean? Everybody and, went to Vegas. Right. They had to earn and, their way uh, there. It's cool to see Monster Energy and some of the you know pros come into it and try to promote the sport. I mean, absolutely. Uh, like I said, it's it's growing back to where I feel where it was. You know, in the early two thousands. I think when we're it was right really there. Booming, and uh, you know, we're seeing people dump a lot of money back into these things. Oh yeah, um, well, that's okay. Like I said, it's great. Yeah, you got to do something with the money. For those of you who don't know, Sean Lowe. Uh, he was the founder and creator of OMPR, and he's the uh, owner of Pit Bike Doctor. And uh, like I said, we, him and I have been going at this hard the last few months. Um, he actually just went out this morning, called me up yeah. to talk this morning. He said, hey, he's like, I'm on my way to get us a trailer to take down to Withville, Virginia next week. And I said, what? Shows up a couple hours later with a Vino's trailer, throw our bikes in. He's, we got to you know, get it all lettered up and stuff for next weekend. And, uh, I mean, the, the guy, I got to give him a hat off to him. Man. Oh. He's hand over fist, you know, he does it for time the and love money. Of the sport. Oh, most definitely. Um, you know, we, we have uh, Ben at Tar Design. He, you know, he's making up t shirts for the group and stickers. I'll be getting a hold um, of him very, very soon. Well, actually, when we go down to Westville, Virginia on the 13th, we, uh, we're going to be doing our live giveaway for our new uh, t shirts. There we go. Oh, and yeah, uh, check those things out. Let's put those yeah, here. That's uh, actually yours, Derek. Um, oh, thanks, man. Most definitely. Check that uh, out. Man. Get yourself, make America great again. Make pit bikes yeah. great again. But, uh, for the folks that's at LMPR. 
But on, on the 13th, we're going to be nominating uh, the nominees for uh, ra- or an online um, giveaway that we're yeah. going on our page. It's for the nicest bike. It's going to be all... I did see that. Yeah, it's going to be all, uh, all based on group members' likes. So, you know, whoever has the most likes... Going into uh, Friday the 13th, we are going to nominate the top three. On the 14th, when we're down at Apex Center, we're going to just find a random rider of our choice. And have him choose. You know, because we don't know very many people down there. Yeah, so you guys it's not like this is rigged right. in any sort of way, but we're going to we're gonna pick a rider, probably a young rider. Um, Always do, start that way. Yeah, oh, it most is. definitely. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna nominate him to, you know, choose his liking on awesome. the top three, and then uh, we'll do it Facebook Live, um, and the winner will receive a T-shirt. Um, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. And that's that's a kick-ass T-shirt. And then actually, uh, March twentieth, we are we have another giveaway going on on our page uh, for the most clapped-out bike. You know, <laughs> I did see that one. You're getting one. If we're doing the nicest, we might as well do the most clapped-out. That way, everybody has a fair chance. You know. Uh, the winner of that's getting one a pair of pair of goggles. Yeah, a pair of your goggles. Yeah, Flow okay. Vision. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're actually gonna do it up to a uh, fifty six dollar value. So they'll have uh, quite a few different options to choose from. Sunglasses there. and a t shirt. Right. We'll, 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 we'll hook it up. We'll hook right. it up for them. Right. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, That'd be nice. Most clapped out pit bike prize giveaway and the best looking, the best. awesomest yeah, right. pit bike giveaway. That's sweet, dude. That's uh, uh, the one thing that uh, differs us from, I guess, some of the other. Uh, pit bike pages is you know I mean, I'm not I'm not calling anybody out but some of the other pit bike pages are more more based around the BBR and the the big minis and the big name pit bikes we we at OMPR we like to you know accept anybody of any kind you know uh, we don't care if you're riding a $500 pit bike or a $15,000 pit bike as long as you're you know riding. we want you to feel welcome and as long as you know you're there to share this you know the the love of the sport with us. That's that's what we're after. You know, um, but uh, that's awesome. I knew that I do know that um, the Sean was on the phone earlier today, connecting some more dots. And were, are you able to talk any any about that? That what he was able to to finalize a deal today? Um, some yeah. Actually, uh, today we we uh, signed agreements. To, we are now the new authorized dealer of the YCF pit bike. That's awesome. Those things are legit. Yes. Like they are yes. almost the same exact. They are the same exact thing as what you're seeing up on top of the podiums around here. Cool. From what I understand, they haven't been in the states very long either. Mm-hmm. So I mean, for us to you know be in the position that we are is is, is awesome. So you guys um, are dealing YCFs, Pitster Pros, uh, Pitster Pros, Piranhas, uh, the RFCs by Apollo. Um, you know. Like I said, we just got signed up with the YCFs. Also, the uh, Sunday Motors, they are a flat track style bike. Those pit, are sweet. Pit bike style. Yeah, we're, we are going to be authorized dealers one, of them as well. We seen one of those at, Mount, or at a Summit. Was that okay. one of the same ones, or was that a variant of something uh, else? I'm not sure if that was a, a one-off like build, or if that was like actually old. one of the Sunday. I heard about it after the race. I didn't get to put my own eyes on Talon that. Talon Thompson, uh, number 63. He was wearing yeah. flannel and racing a 125SX and a flat track pit bike. And he was yeah. doubling through the whoops. <laughs> Sweet. It was crazy. Yeah. But yeah, as, even uh, even as far as the bikes go, I mean, we we uh, we're authorized dealer in parts as well. We deal with BBR, Poly Sport, Pro Circuit, Elko awesome. suspension, Race Tech. And you can uh, get all the parts for all these bikes too. It doesn't yes. matter if it's OEM or aftermarket. You can get you can get these bikes back on the track or trail. Right. Right. That's that's huge because when you think you're buying a Chinese bike, you're thinking you're buying a throwaway. It's not a throwaway bike, especially if you buy a quality machine, you can always get the parts and right. whatever to get them back to an operational condition. You know, but cool. back in the day when you guys were talking about the wildfires and stuff, that's old I, I, I could see. Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> old school. But as far as China and, uh, you know, your name brand, Kawasaki's and all that stuff, they're, they're, all, they're all the same. I mean, they're, Pretty much. they are some, you know, well-built bikes nowadays. Yes. Yes. Um, just out of curiosity, what's your what's your uh, what's your pit bike of choice? I know you have the I know you're you're a KLX one ten diehard that you've had forever, but do you like do you prefer anything else or do you? Um, well, I got I got two KLX in the garage, like I said, that I've had for years. Um, you can't get rid of it. You can't you can't you can't kill them. The 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 pit bike doctor just uh, provided me with a demo bike and a uh, bike for display, and you know. 
to uh, put out there. So I'm hoping to, you know, get some seat time on those along with Sean and them. Sean, uh, Sean bought one as well. So awesome. we're hoping to, uh, you know, spend some laps. Spend some laps for sure. Um, I, I've written, I've written the Pitster Pros. I've written the uh, the Thumbsters. I mean, they're all like I said, they're they're all pretty adequate as far as where they at as far as what they have to offer. I mean, they're all right out of the box, race ready. I mean, you yeah, know, they are. The truth. Yeah. It, you look at you look at what it costs to build a KLX compared to what it is to go buy a, a brand new Piranha or a Pister Pro. It's not there. It, it's almost like back in the day trying to build a, a Honda or a CR or a, an RM, you know, to be competitive with the KTM. You know, KTM's off the showroom floor had you know top of the line brakes, V-force you reads. know, V Force reads. I mean, everything. It, it's, it's almost like that all over again. You know what I mean? And uh, the best value for your money is coming from. Right, China versus Japan. Yeah, I mean nice. it's 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 hard to you know put your put a finger on a bike as far as which which is the best nowadays. I mean even look at the results at Summit. I mean we had you know three or four different brands. Yeah, Piranha Piranha was running out front. I mean you had BBR in there. You had the KLXs in the mix. I mean every. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know. They're all good. They're, they're all about they're what all you like to, all, good. all what you just have in the stable is what's good for you. Right. Right. That's awesome. Well, I can't thank. All right. Yeah, there, there you have my street got me too. I want to thank you guys uh, for joining us for Moto Number Seven of the Moto Ohio Show here in the Everett Three Twenty Eight Production Studios. We've got a couple of more things we want to catch up on um, before we're all done for the day. Uh, we do want to touch base on some results from. The pro race this past weekend, um, it was a race. It was a heck of a time, man. A good race. That 450 class was no joke. Let me just uh, take a look here at everything else we've got on my on my schedule here. And that pretty much takes care of it. Got the Rossi's 2 wrapped up. We're going to uh, touch on the hype races here in just a second. So let's uh, recap the Monster Energy Supercross real quick. Um, looking at these 250 results, the 250 race wasn't as um, exciting We'll say Seems as the point pretty race. much as as it should. Yes, it was a it was a very good race from start to finish in that right. 250 class, but there wasn't any that. any standout things. Joe Shimoda though. That's the one standout. Yes, Joe Shimoda is top the huge five. top five, especially uh it was a last lap pass into that number five position. Um Joe Shimoda did and he was he was making it count. Um I wanna have to I give to March Banks as well. March Banks, we've seen yeah. him race at Briarcliff before, he's super fast. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out Nick Gaines, the rider coming out of Georgia, Ringle, Georgia, on the the 3D Yamaha. Um, hats off, man! Fourth place in the heat race. We were really going hard on a boy the other weekend for not making, you know, this and that. He's got the factory ride, and he shouldn't this, and he shouldn't that. Boy, he backed himself back up, didn't he? Jalex Wool. Nice place. Yes, very, very much nice so. For him. That's the way he should be doing it, and I'm proud of him. Yeah. I want to <coughs> just give a huge shout out Nick Gaines again. We see Nick race most Especially of the Tri-State, Tri-State. Tri-State Arena Cross so races, so. and he was right up there at the keeping top of the step. Keeping himself in shape. Look at that. Tri-State keeping him fit. Yes. Uh, I wanted to talk about this. Did you see you seen um, these results right here? I'm pretty sure Luke Neese, he is the defending AMA um arena cross champion the kicker arena cross champion i'm pretty sure he's the defending champion so what is your opinion kevin as being at a tri-state arena cross race and you're pretty familiar with watching luke nice on social media and stuff like that what is your opinion of there's one two maybe three of the tri-state arena cross racers getting a better result than your national defending arena cross champ i mean and that's uh and, and it's a, not it's not a start thing. It's not anything. This is happening every weekend. Pretty much. So Tri State is really putting guys on the board, you know, and really giving them a good Ronnie's doing environment. Something right. Ronnie Farmer's doing something correct down there. So I'm I'm hats off to those guys and these younger kids that are getting these kind of you know Jimmy Dakotas is no joke. He's finishing thirteenth. You know I mean no Jimmy joke. Dakotas for a long time. Yeah. Jerry Martin had some issues. You know getting nineteenth. You know, I mean, you're talking Pierce Brown. Wasn't he a straight rhythm winner? Uh, no. Um, I watched him knock out one of the uh, like Pierce Cooper Webb on like just the other day. You know, I mean, Pierce Brown finished in through. second in the heat race in the 250 class. He just didn't That's have amazing. the result. And he, he was like one of the fastest qualifiers or something. So these young guys are really coming through and showing where they're at. You he, know, and that's awesome for them. Um, yeah, talking about. Uh, Pierce Brown, he didn't have a result in the main event that he was hoping for because he finished like in second place in the heat race. Still seventeenth, I'm just saying, just to be in that in that main event. He's looking good. Yeah. 
Um, Hunter Sales, the rider that we've seen <coughs> race the Tri-State Arena Cross Series, uh, he rounded out your top 15. Real good guy. Yeah, really he's, good young man. He's a pretty good rider. Uh, right behind Kevin Moran's, we've seen Kevin Moran's race at Chili Town in the past. So I'm hoping to see Kevin race some more local races when he's got some off weeks because right. it's great to see him around. Um, Jeremy Martin, though, you know, tough break for him because we've seen him eat a tough block early in that main event. Dude, broke his back. rear fender. Yeah. This was gone. Like, that was... That was a mistake um, made by Jeremy Martin, but it, I won't want to say it was necessarily all his fault because R.J. Hampshire, we seen, I think it was R.J. Hampshire, we seen him make a mistake through one of the turns. He cut off a couple of tough blocks on in, on, on mistake because that's just the way his bike was shot off the right. side of one of the jumps. And when he was coming back onto the tr track, his rear tire hit one of the tough blocks, shot it right in kind of the corner of the track, and that just happened to be where Jeremy Martin was going. Martin was probably going down anyhow, but that tough block was there to aid his rear fender getting broken. No, oh, yeah, absolutely, and I mean, just tough break. We it happens. Because we've seen one other rider. It may have been a, it may have been Josh Hill or one of those other riders. He was able to just roll across that tough block, but just the angle in which Jerry Martin hit that tough block, making that mistake on the face of that uh, jump on that turn, I, it's just what happens. That's it. Martin is still chasing that elusive Supercross championship. He's got the outdoor championship. If not one, he's got two of them. Right. He's still trying to chase down that, that Supercross he's championship. It's always going to be really hard to get on the big bike for being so small, too. He is. Uh, he's smaller very smaller guys. It'll be hard to ride with them bigger riders when you get to that side. You know that 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 caliber of racing. You know it's just the size helps. I think. Um, I was a little bit disappointed to see. Let me um, I'm gonna bring up the LCQ results because these are the guys that were on the bubble of making it in and not making it in. Jimmy Dakotas, you were just mentioning, great ride for him. You know, finishing where he did. Just through, making it happen. Squeaking through into that LCQ, he was very very. Um, aggressive in that LCQ because he knew that he had to make it in. And we have a couple of riders that we're familiar with here in Northeast Ohio that didn't make it. And it just showing you what the level level of competition is out there because some of these riders we're about to talk about are really fast. I mean, you got Jeremy Hand. He is yep. one of the local hot shots from around here. The and, local hot shot. And he, he does it. You know, he puts it together. He's he's more of an outdoor rider, I would say, you know, because he's kind of probably a little bit rusty being this one in the second round. I think he's been back. On the East Coast Supercross, but boy, he was doing, he was doing what he could to try and get himself in there, and I and I'm proud of him for that at least. Yeah, I do see. Uh, I do see Garrett mentioning that uh, Hampshire knocked that top block into the track, and I I do believe I mentioned that. Then and yeah. Martin was just aided going down by by that tough block. Um, Jeremy Hand, yeah, you know, tough break for him. One spot, he was on the bubble to he make was it right in there, that but main I event. Mean, having to fight, like I seen when I was watching the race, I'm like, man, Dakota's the one you have to get by. Shucks, so you're going to have to go next, uh, next, right. next week it is, Jeremy. Yeah, uh, Jerry Robin, we've seen Robin racing some of the West Coast 450 races. Right. Going getting well. seat time. Getting yeah. seat time. That's what it's all about, getting more gate drops against more experienced riders. And Jerry Robin just missing that 250 East Main event, finishing in seventh in the LCQ, just ahead of Brock Pappy, who was just, you know, just didn't have his weekend this past weekend in Georgia. I was a little bit disappointed to not see Pappy inside that top five in the LCQ, but he's getting some more seat time in. So we'll hope to see him uh, improve yeah, his results. You know, being his first season, you know, really in the professional ranks. Yes, it is. He's doing, he's doing the futures last year. So. I forgot about that. You so. know, so we're, we, we're getting wet behind the ears and we're getting our stuff together, you know, and uh, hats off to all those guys. You know, I mean, you really rode well. Um, shout out to Cody Van Buskirk. We've seen him racing a couple of Tri-State Arena Cross Series races. Also seen Ezra Hastings racing a lot of the south uh, southwest Ohio races, I've seen Ezra race um, with Scott Plessinger. Scott, Scott Plessinger is, um, I believe, he's a trainer of Ezra. So sweet. We've seen Ezra racing quite a bit. Um, he looks better on 252 stroke to me. I mean, bark. Ezra can make a 252 stroke bark, sweet. absolutely sure. bark, and the makes four, a move. <laughs> the nice. four, the four sure. stroke. I just don't know if that is Hastings Cup of Tea, uh, finishing in 14th in that LCQ. Um, Bobby Piazza, seen him racing some Tri-State Arena Cross Series races as well. Must have had some um, some issues in that LCQ, 17th place. Travis Sewell, 19th place in that uh, in that LCQ. Just a couple of riders that I'm familiar with that I've announced no, right. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the recent past. Um, 
How was your experience? Did you watch the the Supercross this past weekend, Dustin? No, I didn't. That's okay. Uh, well, still got to get caught up on it. <laughs> it's if you don't catch it right when it's on, it's you yeah. can't you can't find it, right. and it's it's hard. We don't have that, but then social media ruin it for you. It, that's Everyone it too. Everyone starts posting stuff to yep. Instagram yep. and Facebook and stuff like that. Oh, this one, that one, this one. I'm like, I well, don't want to know. Oh, yeah, there it went. I'm like, well, I guess I'm not watching the race. Um, I'd be surprised. Yeah, well, the wife was slave driving over the weekend. I had to paint the kitchen and everything, <laughs> so we were remodeling the kitchen and. I didn't get time to sit down and watch it. So. There's usually a couple of uh, riders at the racetrack that come up and tell me, well, did you see the Tomac? I don't want to know. I just, <laughs> I, I don't want to know. Let me get home and watch it myself. Right. So that's about all the more that I've got to talk about for the uh, the 250 class. The 450 class, though. Wow. It was a, it was, it was a ringer, man. That was, <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? Just a, just It was just an all-around, just nail-biter. It had, had me and Ashley on the edge of our seat. You our know boy I mean? was on just, the ground. I mean, she she don't even know what she's really yelling about. She was excited <laughs> and screaming, you know? So, we're, <laughs> we're all yelling for Tomac. That's my kind of girl. So man. we've seen she our boy on the ground. ground. Eli Tomac was way back there in 14th place. Then once he did get up, yeah. we've seen him. i seen him move into the number 13 position, but then i seen uh, Mookie Malcolm Stewart back As in Back in front of Tomac, yeah. and Tomac was back in 14th for another couple of laps. So he was. Yeah, by the time I caught back up after that, he was in seventh. You know, I'm like, damn, how did he get so fast? <laughs> how did he get up there so quick? So I just makes moves no. under the radar and does such a great job. What I was paying very close attention to for the entire 20 minutes plus a lap wasn't how far back Tomac was in the in the in the list of riders it was how far behind Roxon is he right in time no, absolutely because i don't care who is between tomac and Roxon, they are the same speed how fast can they ride the same speed or er, tomac and Roxon can ride the same speed for 20 minutes plus a lap everybody else on the track will start to get winded and their times and their mistakes will start to I would say everybody else. I mean, I'd say everybody. Well, Barsha, Barsha held in there good. And Cooper he did. Ran, Cooper I mean, Webb rode right in front of you like the whole time. That's no, that's no slouch for Justin Barsha or Cooper Webb. But, uh, you know, just amazed. paying attention to um, to Eli Tomac and Cooper Webb, they stayed about a consistent gap off of Roxon the entire the race. They all rode the same consistency. That's why they run right up through the pack like they did. But you gotta give you got to give your hats off to Martin Davalos. That's my guy. Like, you know this. This is his rookie campaign in that 450 class, and almost didn't have a ride. He was, He's the underdog, and blah blah blah. I'm like, dude, he is Mitch Payton's number one recruit. If he didn't have a ride right now, he'd be riding a 450 anyways for Adam Cincerillo's bike. He'd be on his bike, you know, because the guy has got talent. Just come. I mean, he does such a great job. I mean, tell me he don't. He ran second, third, top podium. The whole it's race. Just, you know, you know his his fitness is just a little bit off from the the factory guys That's, right now. We were we were hearing it during the uh, during the live broadcast of this uh, Monster Energy Supercross man. race that Martin Davalos, he 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 needs to get the top five under his belt before he gets the top three under his belt before he gets that race win. But Martin Davalos having the mentality of a racer, he wants to go out there and win no matter what. Like he doesn't want to get a top five before he wins. He wants to get his top five yeah by winning. Right. That's what Martin Davalos is striving for. But you cannot be disappointed with a top five finish. No. No way, no siree. Um, Eli Tomac finishing in fourth. Cooper Webb third. Justin Barsha, the um, Levi Kilbarger trained rider, finishing in the number two spot. But Ken Roxon, super fast, consistent results. That's what's going to take to win championships. And with mistakes like Tomac, I hope that we don't see those week in, week out, week in, week out with him because Roxon is not making the, the, the mistakes week in, week out. So, yeah. I'm trying to pay attention to the Facebook I'm stuff trying as well. to, too. I'm trying to just watch some people. I'm sorry, guys, if I just get a little bit here and there, but I'm just Same trying to here. pay attention to everything. I get a little distracted. I'm trying to accommodate everybody. You know, I'm like, eh, hey, well, you know, we're, doing, we're already talking about the things that most people are talking about, so yes. I'm happy. Uh, Jack Dill mentioning that uh, Race Ohio is having a race at Pachetta Creek. So that is uh, that's going to be pretty great, cool. man. That'd be a good time. Wapakoneta, Ohio. Wapakoneta. I did, a, did a survey there not too awful long ago. Um, a lot of fun. Yeah. I like... I, I just like saying the word. Wapakoneta? Sure. I like Wasi. I like listening to you say. <laughs> oh. uh, Dustin's just like, what is going on right here? Man? These two are out of control. I love it. That's um, how I usually keep it. Anything else going on on the uh, on the old Facebook another, stream here? So got some people watching. We got a couple people. We got twenty four guys. That's awesome. Ladies, so, guys, we're doing it. Um, that pretty much wraps up with a lot of things that we have from this year. We're we're getting to be about showtime. Looking at uh, looking at the stream, we are about an hour in. So we're 
we're getting close to the end of the of the show for round number seven of the Moto Ohio show. Moto seven of the Moto Ohio show, excuse me. That's um, it. Huge shout out to OMPR and the Pit Bike Doctor for helping us out for the upcoming foreseeable future. Um, but I do also want to mention a couple of races coming up um, this Saturday. I will be at Switchback MX for the final round of the Switchback Indoor Series. I was at two of their races earlier this year, and I'm planning on being there very, very early on Saturday and setting up a 10 by 10, selling some Flowvision goggles, and doing some interviews with some riders for some Moto Ohio show, and just having some fun. Definitely seen, definitely seen where they revamped the track. You know, I see a little video. They refaced everything. They got everything real crisp. Is it the same way I've been? Yeah, I, I, not the same as when you were there. Okay, but it's it's been changed. But it looked like he really had he really had it dressed in nice, everything tracked in good. So it should be a great time. Awesome. Uh, I'm really looking forward to going out to switch back for the final race of the indoor series. Um, just talk for just a couple of seconds, Kevin. I'm gonna try to get some uh, some times for these for these people. No, so. yeah, and for sure. I mean, this being the last, don't don't be deterred. Like, oh no, it's it's going away and stuff like that. Switchback will be right back probably with some outdoor stuff. Um. I know their, their outdoor track is killer. Right. I mean, it's a good time there, and and the guys that run it there at Switchback really do well, and and you know, and it's just it's like it's just your it's just your race and race pace, just like when we go to Route 62, even racing right. your pit bikes, it's a different feeling than just even practicing because you know you need you got to perform. You know, it seems like it just gives you a better intensity level when it's race time. It's race time, and I, I love race time. Thanks for filling that time, uh, Kevin. And uh, I try my I try my best. Hey. <laughs> That's you what did. I'm here for. Yes, right. you, you, hey, you capitalize whatever the time is on you. Um, thanks uh, for that. The March 7th, I'm getting my tongue tied here. March 7th, wrapping things up at Switchback MX for their final indoor series Wear race. Um, sign up at 10, practice at noon, heat races at 2 with the main events at 6 o'clock in the evening. So make sure you guys add that on your schedules to get some, uh, get some more gate drops this winter. Absolutely. And we will be, Kevin and I, are planning on going down to um, the Route 62 this Sunday for the final pit bike bash at, at Jimmy's. So I'm really looking yeah, forward Route to that one. Route 62, appreciate you guys. You know what I'm saying? Put on these races, stuff like that. Like, I still have a canopy. To turn, spin some laps. I still have a canopy in my speaker set up down there when I was from there Sunday. Left everything set up. We're right, ready right, to go. Ready, ready to go. Ready to go for this weekend. Yeah. Um, also, some more upcoming races. Got a couple of weeks off, but there's uh, another upcoming uh, pit bike race in a few weeks, but Malvern season opener is kicking off at the end of the month. So if be you there got, or not, but I'm gonna tell you what, it's gonna be a good round. The the date is March third, twenty twenty, today, and the season opener for the outdoor season six days kicks off in twenty six days. March twenty ninth. I'm 29th. pumped, man. It's about time. Yeah. I hate winter. I know. I live here every year. Um, like a tree, I grew roots or something. <laughs> Silly. I do have to make a couple announcements on my end. I am stoked to be at Chili Town this year. Chili Town. For all three of their events, they have a, uh, a battle race, a qualifier, and the Halloween race scheduled this year. Absolutely. So. I mean, Chili Town, you know, you got Scott Plessinger down there, the Moto Photo, all those guys we were just talking about. Come on down and join join the crowd and have some good racing. Man. I'm stoked Derek, to go down this year. This it year. always makes it feel like home when you're on the announcers. When you're on the microphone. I'm going to have my tunes good, jamming good. all weekend long. I'll I be do. down there doing podium interviews. I'm stoked to go down to Chili Town this year, adding that race to the schedule. A um, couple more things we got on the docket coming up early next month. Uh, like I just mentioned earlier in the show, on April 11th, that is Saturday, uh, that is the Tri-State Arena Cross Banquet. So if you guys race the Tri-State Arena Cross, hopefully you guys finished good and make it to the banquet on april 11th i'll be there spinning some laps that's it yeah anything Should else we got to talk about dustin anything we else we were putting a pin in that we didn't didn't hit on no uh not that i can think of um we just like appreciate said, you being here man yeah, you know and, and spreading the word and, and doing some and doing For some sure. bit like stuff because it seems like you're headed in the right direction and and we'll and we'll do the best to keep you guys out there too right yeah. that's it 2020 is great 2020 is the year, man. It's coming back. We're gonna make pit bikes great again. Motocross is it's already great. It's it's growing even more. The Moto Ohio too. show is spreading. We're getting some people on board. We've got some things that we're still getting out there and doing great. It's yeah. gonna be awesome. It's gonna be an awesome season. So uh, thanks once again, Dustin, for joining us for Moto Number Seven of the Moto Ohio show, Meister. I did not say it five times, so no set of goggles for One, you. One, two, or three. <laughs> just two. Just two. two. Only two. So, um, well, here, I really appreciate everyone for uh, for watching. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I got no deal. I got, I got no bit. I got no bet. Um, it, that's that's all I've got. So if, um, if anybody doesn't have any questions, let me check out the uh, the Facebook stream. 
once again. Um, Moto Photo loves your show. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Um, yeah. Do I mention, uh, please hit that subscribe button down in down in that corner. Give our show a like here and drop us a comment over there on the YouTube stream. So whenever you guys see this post on YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe, share it, hit that like button on Facebook. Um, doesn't matter if it's the Moto Ohio show, Ever 320 Productions, or the OMPR post. Please share it. Like it, comment it, subscribe it. Do what you got to do to spread the Moto Ohio show. We're trying to not only make every, we're trying to make everything great. That's it, man. And just getting the word out there and showing some love to some of our younger riders and the older riders and trying to keep everybody filled in. So we're trying to be, we're trying to be the news source. That's it for Ohio motocross. Yeah, because the, the real That's news the sucks. You know what I mean? So at least this news is fun and <laughs> You're right. happy. You know what I mean? Right, you get to hear right. me talk. The real news is depressing. Like every time you turn on the news, every time you turn on t- channel three or it's like channel a five, movie. it is. You don't want your kids <laughs> watching. You don't want your kids watching the news. You don't. don't this number to your well, child. You can watch the Moto Ohio show. So make That's sure you guys uh, subscribe, join us. We're gonna try to keep this. Very, very close. Uh, we're going to try to make the show every Tuesday at 6. Every six Tuesday at 6 p.m. is our goal. Is our goal. But we we had to work through some technical difficulties today, getting things posted, all the pages that we were trying to get to. Um, but we finally got all the technical bugs worked out, and we're right on showtime. So we're typically about an hour long, and we're an hour in right now. So sweet. that wraps up Moto number 7 of the Moto Ohio Show. Dustin, thank you for joining us. Thank you um, for having me. That's that's it. Join us next week for Moto number eight of the Moto Ohio Show. We'll be recapping the Route 62 uh, pit bike race, the switchback race, and we don't know who's going to be sitting in that chair right there. We'll get someone. But we've got the feelers out there. It is it is uh, guest time once again for the Moto yep. Ohio Show. So send your emails. Uh, get a hold of us if you guys are interested in sitting in Dustin's seat. We're going to have that available in the very near future. So that's it. Want to thank you guys once again. Vlog out for motor number seven of the Moto Ohio show.